Hello, I'm Alison Colley from Real Employment Law Advice and in this video I'm going to do a short furlough scheme recap for employers. So just covering off some of the key details about the extension of the scheme which started on the 1st of November and which is currently going to run until the end of April 2021. Although there has been reports in the news, even today, about the possibility of the scheme being extended. Now, I know that there aren't any details available about this at the moment, but of course it is a possibility depending on how long the lockdown restrictions last, what businesses continue to be affected, and whether there are businesses that have to continue to close post-April. So we don't know yet whether it will be extended, but it is always a possibility. The key points I want to recap and note about the scheme for employers is that currently all businesses can utilise the scheme. The only contribution required is NI and pension. Employers can claim 80% of pay for furloughed employees and there's no requirement for an employer to top that up. The employees don't have to have been furloughed before. Under the previous scheme rules, there was a requirement that employees had to have been furloughed by a particular date in order to be furloughed in future. And that's no longer the case. So employees can be furloughed for the first time, any time at the moment. Employees can be furloughed or flexibly furloughed. So what that means is someone can be um, furloughed for the whole time of their normal hours or flexibly. So that enables employers to bring people back part time or to be more flexible around the workforce. There is no maximum number of employees who can be furloughed. Again, previously, um, there was rules introduced under the old scheme that you couldn't furlough more employees than you had previously furloughed. Um, that's not the case anymore. So there is more scope for employers to furlough staff under the current scheme as the rules stand at the moment. And I'm recording this on the 21st of January. So as the scheme rules stand now. There are monthly deadlines for making your claim. So if you are claiming furlough pay, then you have to do so. It's within 14 days at the end of the month of the uh, period that you're claiming for. And there is no minimum period for furlough. So you do have a lot of flexibility around the current scheme to make changes and to use your staff as you need to and to furlough and use the furlough scheme. And with your consent, employees can work elsewhere whilst furloughed. Um, again, they need your consent to do so. Um, that may be that they have to get express consent from you or it may be that their consent is already contained in their employment contract. But if they wanted to work somewhere else, then they can do. There is still the requirement to notify employees in writing about the furlough arrangements. So to be eligible, an employer must confirm to the employee in writing that they have been furloughed or flexibly furloughed. You're required to keep that letter for five years and under the scheme rules, you're not required to get their response so they don't have to expressly sign to say they've received it and they agree. But uh, my advice is to do so. So it's important that you have that on record to say that you have communicated that to employees and that they've agreed. Now, that's not necessarily a requirement for HMRC in relation to your furlough claim, but in relation to your contractual obligations and any potential future employment disputes, it's important to have that on record. In relation to holiday and furlough, we are getting asked a lot of questions about employees taking holiday during furlough or being required to take holiday during furlough, particularly now that we're in another period of lockdown. So employees can take holiday during furlough time and employers can continue to claim furlough pay for that time that the employee is on holiday. An employer must pay the full rate of 100% of pay for any time that an employee is on holiday during furlough. So any time that's designated as holiday time must be at the full rate of pay. Under the holiday pay rules, employees must be paid um, holiday pay on the average of the last 52 weeks earnings. Now this can create some disparity for employers around the amount that they're actually claiming under the furlough scheme. So there is a set calculation for recovering that 80% from the government for furlough pay, but what an employer has to pay the employee is 100% pay based on an average of the last 52 weeks. It's important for employers to remember that the furlough scheme and what they pay employees are two separate things. 
So what you're contractually and legally required to pay your employees may be different to what you're going to be able to claim from the government by way of a grant or whatever you want to call it under the furlough scheme. So oftentimes the lines are being blurred here. Employers are thinking about furlough pay and paying that to staff. And actually what you should be thinking of is what am I legally required to pay my staff? And then what of that can I recover under the furlough scheme rules? You can, as an employer, stipulate that employees take holiday during furlough, either by giving notice to them in accordance with their employment contract or by giving double the notice of the time that you want them to take. This is becoming increasingly important for employers, I know, um, in light of the third lockdown and particularly for those businesses who have a holiday year that runs from the financial year. So maybe from April to March, um, that's three periods of lockdown and potentially three periods of furlough during the full um, holiday year. And employers are becoming worried about employees continuing to accrue and rack up lots of holiday. So if you do want your employees to take holiday between now and the end of the financial year, for example, or during the lockdown period, it's really important to communicate that to them. So that would be putting it in writing, explaining the amount that they're required to take. And if you're stipulating it needs to be taken on a particular date, um, stating those dates. Um, and then I just add at the bottom there something that has come up recently, and that is to say um, employees should not be placed on furlough simply because they are taking holiday. That's not within the spirit of the scheme rules. Um, if somebody comes to you who's working ordinarily, um, you know, let's say they're working from home and they want to take some holiday, um, you can't then say we're going to put you on furlough so um, that you can basically recover some of that money back. It's not within the scheme rules and you can use holiday during furlough time, but you can't furlough someone just because they are on holiday. With regards to redundancy and notice pay, um, you cannot claim furlough pay for a period where an employee is serving notice. So if you are making redundancies, you can't then give notice and then claim furlough pay back um, under the scheme. You need to pay the employee at the 100% rate and you wouldn't be able to recover any money. Um, and that's whether you give notice or the employee gives notice. So for whatever reason, you still cannot claim. So if an employee gives you notice that they have another job and they want to leave, then you can't continue to furlough them and recover the money from the government. That was just a short recap on some of the key points around furlough and furlough pay and some of the questions that we've been asked frequently um, in relation to that by both employers and employees. I hope that you found it useful and of course if you have any questions or you want any advice then you can get in touch with us. My um, Email is alison at realemploymentadvice.co.uk or alternatively you can give us a call on 01983 897 003. Many thanks for watching.